My name is Carl Gomberg. I am the Director of Policy Development and Research at the Internet Society, which is an NGO committed to an open, globally connected, secure, and trustworthy internet for everyone. When it comes to enabling, I think uh, policymakers should focus on safeguarding some of the important progress that has been made on this front over the past decade. Uh, for some reason, there's been this very negative picture that's been painted of Europe's telecom sector and the future of connectivity in Europe. But when you compare Europe to many other parts of the world, things are going quite well, actually. Uh, connectivity targets are well underway. Um, there's a relatively competitive access market. And as a result, uh, internet access services are relatively affordable compared to the rest of the world. So Europe is doing quite well, if you look at the bigger picture. Now, of course, none of that means that there isn't work to be done or that things uh, can't be improved. There is always things that can be improved, but the point here is that what's needed is not an overhaul of existing policy. Rather, what is needed is to kind of build on the success of today and do incremental changes to European telecom policy. And part of the reason for this is uh, I think yeah, visible when you look at Europe from from other parts of the world, because Europe has been a bit of a global leader and also an inspiration, I would argue, to many parts of the world when it comes to its telecom policies, from policies around infrastructure sharing to the critically important net neutrality rules. Um, and I think the path forward here should be to build on these successes rather than throwing them out the window because they've been key in enabling Europe's success. So when we talk about what European policymakers should enable, uh, the goals haven't really changed fundamentally. It's about enabling competition, participation, and innovation. And uh, safeguarding an open internet is critically important towards that end. But I think getting there and, and getting towards these incremental changes that might be needed requires that policymakers understand from where they start. And the fact is that they're at a much better starting point than some interests may want to have them believe. I think European policymakers need to avoid distractions, quite frankly, and to listen to a broader set of stakeholders when it comes to discussing Europe's connectivity needs. Um, there's been a very worrying trend in the past years where uh, a quite limited perspective, and notably reflecting that of Europe's largest telecom operators, has come to really frame Europe's telecom agenda and, and the problems that policy is meant to resolve. And we've seen this in the proposals from the European Commission. And we've seen this in the consultations that were held both this year and last year. And we've also seen it in the most recent Draghi report. And I would argue that the common denominator across all of these is that the problems that are being presented are framed from a very particular angle, uh, often uh, contradicting the views of pretty much all other stakeholders in Europe, and notably contradicting more in-depth assessments by European regulators. So the first thing for policymakers to avoid is this very narrow perspective of Europe's connectivity needs and to really include more voices into the conversation and to uh, listen to the experts, um, including, and importantly, the European regulators, that uh, have a different view of the, the problems and challenges that faces Europe going forward. And I think a big part of, of sort of fostering this new perspective by uh, European policymakers is to ensure that they recognize that telecom operators are, they're not an end in themselves, but they're really means to an end. Um, they're, they're, they are infrastructures and they're infrastructures that can, help promote civic participation, that can help enable innovations, that can be critically important for a democratic society. Uh, and if there's something that we've learned from the internet is that there is, a, there is an important value in the type of connectivity that the internet provides. And that is uh, notably a general purpose connectivity that can support all of these this sort of full range of demands that modern society have on connectivity, whether it comes from, you know, the, the online conferencing tools like we're using here, or, you know, your entertainments in the evenings, or uh, whether it's the, the infrastructure for your business to operate. 
the the beauty of a general purpose connectivity like the internet is that it's it's built for all of those things and none of those things. Uh, it's a general purpose connectivity that offers its users uh, a range of opportunities uh, and that can satisfy a number of different demands. And this sort of link between connectivity and innovation, I think, is critically important for European policymakers to understand. Uh, if they want to better understand how connectivity can foster innovations and how connectivity ultimately serve European society. And this includes looking beyond a subset of metrics, uh, such as bandwidth, and, and not because bandwidth isn't important. I mean, bandwidth is absolutely important, but it's not the only um, sort of metric that is relevant when we think about a connectivity infrastructure of the future. Uh, if you want to foster connectivity infrastructure in support of competition, of innovation and, and participation, you do need to consider these other qualities like the general purpose internet. You need to consider things like the ability of having global reach of your network and to avoid, uh, for instance, these very, um, these, these very worrying trends of internet fragmentation that we've seen in recent years and to actively work towards keeping the internet open so that new innovations can be deployed. So safeguarding global connectivity, preserving the internet uh, as an open platform that can support pretty much any sector of the economy, that is really the key here. And European policymakers need to avoid anything that could put this at risk.